Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Mark Rosewater, the head designer at Wizards, runs a blog known as Blogatog, and Morrow was asked, Ixalan has a whole continent that the vampires are from and live in, but we never saw it in the cards. The new Ixalan seems like it won't focus on this either in favor of another unseen part of Ixalan. Why did you do this? And then Mark responded, we were making an underground set, and Ixlon felt like the best fit for it. It wasn't the other way around. So, this actually uh, might not be news to you, but it was news to me that the new Ixlon set that's going to be coming out this year is going to be set underground, which I think is going to be pretty cool, seeing a whole new side of Ixlon. And Ixlon, again, brings back, I'm at least assuming it's going to be bringing back a lot of those exciting creature types that we got in the previous one. I mean, we've got, you know, like pirates, we've got merfolk, we've got vampires, and of course, we've got dinosaurs. And dinosaurs are a very exciting and popular tribe out there. And whenever these kinds of things happen, my brain tends to get going a little bit. And I like to kind of think about maybe what we might be seeing in the future. So, I may or may not have uh, designed my own version of a card that I would be excited to see in the upcoming set. And it, of course, is named Zildjor of the Depths. That wasn't very uh, uh, scary. Here we go. Zildjor of the Depths. There we go. Kind of more like that, I guess. I don't know. This is just obviously a concept, but I'd love to get your feedback on it. And let me know if you think this is something that could possibly be in this brand new set. Because... Well, we've never seen a five-color dinosaur commander. Okay, I know technically. Ah, uh, well, Mitch, uh, Morophon is a five-color dinosaur commander. Yeah, Ma Morophon is a five-color commander for all the tribes. I understand that. But still, a dedicated dinosaur five-color commander I think could be very exciting. Let's jump into my first design of this. And I'll actually talk, take you through uh, two designs of this because, um, well, uh, you'll see. A 7-7 seven, seven elder dinosaur that costs four in Wooburg. So, again, five colors, access to everything Vigilance, Menace, Trample, Haste, and Ward 2. So kind of getting, you know, a piece of all the different colors. And whenever another dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, double the power of dinosaur creatures you control. Now, this is where I need your help. And please comment below. Let me know if that's um, too much, because that very well might be too much, because there aren't too many ways. Yes, there are some ways to make dinosaur tokens. There's not too many, though. Of course, there's other ways to use and abuse this effect with maybe blink effects as well. So, yeah, doubling up your army's power again and again and again in a turn can get pretty crazy, especially since your commander, again, has Vigilance, Menace, Trample, Haste, and Ward 2. It is a 7-power commander, meaning that, well, like the uh, Elder Dragons from years and years and years ago, it is a 3-shot commander. But um, if you get a dinosaur into play, that trigger happens and doubles up your commander's power as well to 14. And then if you get another one to play, it doubles that to 28. So yeah, this commander, again, can very easily be a one-shot KO. So that might be just a bit too much. So with that, um, yeah, he here's the other slightly adjusted design. And I didn't change too much. What I did change was whenever another dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, double the power of target dinosaur creature until end of turn. So, this is kind of just a different way to play with it where it's a bit more specific. Sure, you can still make your commander into a one-shot KO, or you can pump another creature. Uh, there are, of course, ways you can do things at instant speed to surprise double up power. This might be not enough, again, for nine mana. I, somewhere in between could be better. Maybe it's just an ETB when this comes into play and it doubles up all creatures, all your dinosaur creatures' power until end of turn. So, regardless, I mean, the way that you build around each of these would probably be around the same because... Um, yeah, you want dinosaurs to come into play to double up the power of your creatures. One is obviously more powerful than the other, doubling up your entire army versus specific targeting. Yeah, I, I, I think somewhere in between these two would be great. But yeah, let me know in the comments what your thought is on all of this, regardless of how it ends up being, though. Yeah, there would be some exciting ways to build around this one. I do hope Wizards gives us a five-color dinosaur again from the depths because yeah we are going to be underground I think you can get some really exciting ones like some ancient dinosaur that has not been seen ever or whatnot or essentially just hey it's it's came out finally after you know it was disturbed from its long slumber it's you know a five color that we've never seen a different kind of type that we've never seen doing some crazy things um yeah yeah let me know what your thoughts are on this now with that said um 
obviously a reminder this is a custom card that i made uh it very well might be nothing like any of the cards coming up in this upcoming set i'm gonna be pretty sad if we don't see a five color dinosaur but um but yeah it might be somewhat similar i've actually been somewhat close in the past for certain things uh like the uh, the tenth sword i was I actually i think i got one of the two pieces of the tenth sword uh, in the Watcher in the Water one that just came out in Lord of the Rings, I, I, I correctly, you know, said that that would utilize the, you know, text that Morrow said. Now, that being said, I got the rest of it wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been right in some ways, wrong in some ways. Let me know your thoughts are in the comments below. Do you think this is going to be anywhere near close to what we're going to be seeing? Regardless, I, of course, uh, couldn't help myself. I kind of had to just make... Well, uh, some cards that would work well with this. You know, like in my quick takes, I do budget buys, price your picks. Yeah, uh, don't pick up these cards. I mean, I, I guess maybe in, you know, th there's probably going to be some legendary dinosaurs in this set, right? So maybe pick up some dinosaur themed cards, I guess, if you if you think you're going to be building a dinosaur deck in anticipation of this. Uh, but regardless, yeah, this is not an actual commander, so keep that in mind. But now let's move on to the budget cards that I just want to bring up that would work well with this commander. Again, cards that are less than one R cards within my you know, budget restriction. So first up, Knight of the Stampede, of course, a great one. Two for a human knight for four mana. Not a dinosaur, obviously, but dinosaur spells you cast cost to us to cast. Massive cost reduction for your dinosaurs, of course, can be great. Again, being able to cast more of them in a single turn would double up the power, again, of either, you know, one dinosaur or your team, depending on how that entire design would end up. Next up, obviously, tokens. Tokens would be great as well. Again, like I mentioned, there's actually not too many ways to make dinosaur tokens. It's not like elves, you know, or humans or soldiers or whatnot, where you can just like, yeah, this one spell makes 40 elves. You don't really have that. So Crested Herd Caller is still a very good one. Again, 3-3 three, three, Dinosaur with Trample. Enters the battlefield to create 3-3 three, three, Dinosaur Creature Token with Trample for 5 mana. Getting 2 ETB Traegers for your commander again can be absolutely massive. I mean, just making your commander into a one-shot KO as it is. Next up, Gavi Ness Warden. 2-5 Human Shaman. Again, not a dinosaur for 5 mana. You may pay 0 and pay the cycling cost the first card you cycle each turn. So that's nice if you have any cycling effects in the deck. More importantly, though, whenever you draw your second card each turn, you get a 2-2 red and white dinosaur cat creature token. So, any of your mass draw spells, I mean, not even mass draw spells, but like divination plus draw spells, two cards drawn are going to be able to get you to that point. And obviously, on your turn, you're just going to have to draw an extra single card, and that will happen. Next up, Galt and Maverin. Yet another giant dinosaur that would love to get its power doubled. 12-12 trampling dinosaur vampire for... Just seven mana. Gosh, magic has come a long time since, like, Crawl Worm. <laughs> Whenever you attack, choose one. Get a tapped and attacking XX Green Ice Creature with Trample or X Grace Power among other attacking creatures. Or you can make a bunch of vampires. Obviously, with this one, you're probably more likely going to be making that dinosaur because, hey, you get a giant dinosaur that's tapped and attacking, and you also then get that trigger for your commander that's like, hey, let's double up our army's power. Again, assuming that that would be the one. Let's just say that that's the one for now. I know that one's probably a bit powerful. It, again, is a nine mana commander. Let's just say that one, okay, just to make it easier so I'm not going back and forth. But yeah, doubling up your army's power on attack. That could be massive, and making this into a 2024-24. Well, of course, uh, the, the token you're making is going to be quite massive as well. Next up, though, while there aren't all that many ways of making dinosaur tokens, you can also include shapeshifter changeling tokens, like from Birthing Bounce. A four mana activation tap create a 2-2 color shapeshifter creature token with changeling again, which means it's every creature type, of course, including dinosaur. And of course, yeah, four mana tap, double up the power of your army. That's pretty incredible, especially since you're also getting a little dinosaur. Yeah, two, two. But yeah, when you, you know, double up, it's going to be four, then eight. It can actually get very, very massive very, very quickly. Moving on. Crib swap. Changeling spell, which is quite interesting. Exile target creature. Centaur creates a one, one color shapeshifter creature token with changeling. So, hey, instant speed, you can just exile one of your own creatures, and then suddenly you get a 1-1 one, one dinosaur. I mean, changeling, basically a dinosaur, right? Get that trigger from your commander. Again, three mana, essentially, instant speed, combat trick, double up your army's power. This can be massive. Again, right after your opponent declares some blocks, it can be like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, do it, yeah, oh, yep, yeah, I, I win with this. Okay, goodbye. Moving on, regular cohort. Yet another great changeling that brings us another changeling. ETBs make a 2-2 changeling. So yeah, basically, again, double the power of your army and double it again for just four mana. Again, turning your commander into a one-shot KO. And of course, yeah, like I mentioned before, blink spells. Again, you're in five color. You got access to all the best blink spells, every single blink spell. Cloud Shift, Exile, a creature control, returns the battlefield under your control for a single white mana. Again, blink something that might be in danger in combat potentially, but also, yeah, instant speed, one mana, double up the power of your army. What's not to love about that? And of course, yeah, you'd also be considering a lot of great dinosaurs. I mean, like just to name one, Atali, a great dinosaur, a great amount of value. 
attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. They may cast any number of spells from among those cards without paying the mana cost. This can be huge for a deck like this because, again, you can be getting your commander's trigger in combat as well. Again, another great kind of, well, probably unexpected, but uh, pretty fun combat trick. You're even tricking yourself. You didn't know you might be getting a dinosaur, a blink spell, or whatnot off the top to cast to be able to get that value. So, yeah, have fun with that on top of all your opponent's things, too. Now, next up, though, let's move on to the pricier picks again. Cards that are outside of my budget that would be good for a dinosaur deck like this one. Again, uh, yeah, who knows if a dinosaur like this will come out, but I'm really hoping there's a five-color dinosaur tribal commander at least coming out in this upcoming set. Regardless, Watley, Warrior opponent, a great one. Three, loyalty, plus two, you gain life, really greatest power, one creature control. That can work great, obviously, with all of this power doubling. Yeah, uh, hey, you want to gain... 30, 40 life, whatever it is, essentially. Cool. If you need to do that, pad your life total. Zero, create a 3-3 three, three green eyes, creature on the trample. Again, there aren't too many ways to make a, a lot of dinosaur tokens. This is one of them. It's a repeatable way. Minus X deals X damage by among you choose among any of our creatures. Creatures dealt this damage, can't block this turn. Again, a great way to get your creatures through. And by doubling up their power, that can just be a great way to take them out. Next up, one that kind of works, but does not, but still is good enough for this kind of a deck. I mean, it's great. It just, you wish it kind of worked a little bit differently. 6-6, six, six, Trampling Dinosaur Beast, Quartzwood Crasher for just five mana. Whenever one of our creatures you control a trample deal, combat damage to a player, you get an XX Green Dinosaur Beast, Creature with Trample. X is the amount of damage those players dealt, damage dealt to those players. Basically, hey, uh, this does happen essentially after that combat damage is dealt, so you're not going to be doubling up your creature's power. That being said, um, yeah, if your creature has double strike, maybe. Again, if you can give your commander double strike, great. I mean, that's already just a good thing. And of course, yeah, if you have double strike, you're going to be getting a creature into play. You're going to be doubling up the power. If you get extra combats as well, that, of course, is a great thing as well. Many extra combat spells are in the pricier pick area, you know, when it comes to price. But yeah, there can be a lot of great things you can do with something like this. And of course, yeah, just, just making more and more and more trampling creature tokens can be huge. Next up, Registrar Alpha. This one helps out in multiple ways. 4-4 four, four, Dinosaur for 5 mana. ETBs, you get a 3-3. Three, three. With Trample on top of that, Dinosaurs you control have haste. Other dinosaurs, I should say. Regardless, giving your army haste is massive. Getting them into play, again, getting a lot of dinosaurs into play can be great because you can double up power again and again and again. And then, of course, swing out with your team. Have fun with that. Next up, Black Market Connections. This one is very good in a lot of decks, but usually for different reasons than this. Beginning of your pre-combat main phase, choose one. You get a treasure token, you lose one life. Draw a card, lose two life. Create a 3-2 color shaped creature token with changeling, you lose three life. Usually, it's those first two that most players care about. Again, getting a treasure and drawing a card for three life in total, that's amazing. That being said, hey, with this deck, yeah, we really want that changeling. We really, really want that changeling. Give us that 3-2. We'll lose the three life. We'll double the power of our creatures. Again, changeling tokens are great for this kind of a commander. Masquid Nexus, another great card to this kind of a commander that can be, do some really weird things. Creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't in the battlefield. So, um... Yeah, all those creatures that I brought before that was like, hey, this is good in the deck, but it's not a you know, dinosaur. Oh, this is good in the deck, but it's not a dinosaur. Um, now they're also dinosaurs because everything basically has changeling. So have fun getting all those triggers even from them. On top of that, pay three tap. You make a two to a changeling. Yeah, another great repeatable way to get the most out of your trigger. And I did kind of mention Morophon before. Yeah, Morophon is technically a five color dinosaur commander. It technically is a five color whatever creature type commander, essentially. That being said, it would be great in the 99 of this deck. 6-6, six, six, Shapeshifter with Changeling for 7 mana in total. Enters the battlefield, which is a creature type. In this case, obviously, Dinosaur. Spell cast, Chosen Type, cost Woober, Glass to Cast. It only reduces colored mana you pay. Other creature control of the Chosen Type get plus plus 1. So a nice small Anthem effect. Yeah, but more importantly, giant cost reduction. Uh, yeah, making your dinosaurs even cheaper to cast, obviously, in combination with those more generic cost reductions as well, like I talked about earlier can be just a massive play for you. Again, casting dinosaur after dinosaur after dinosaur, just getting an absurd amount of value. And when it comes to value, um, Takashima of a Thousand Faces. Yeah, also technically not a dinosaur. Still, 3-1 Human Rogue for four mana. Enters the battlefield as a copy of other creature control, except it has Takashima of a Thousand Faces other abilities. It's a dinosaur now too. Thank you. Also, the legend rule does apply for which you control. So, hey, make it a copy of your commander. Now, all of a sudden, you've got two commanders, which again, are just absolutely massive, heavy hitting creatures that um, also, yeah, yeah. And now uh, double up and then quadruple up essentially every single time one dinosaur comes into play. So again, you play one dinosaur, you get both their triggers doubling and quadrupling. 
Have fun. We're doubling, doubling again. You know what I mean. Anyways, just uh, make your commander day one shot KO with any dinosaur coming into play. Then moving on, Garrick's Uprising. This one is good for multiple reasons. Enters the battlefield to control a creature with power for a greater draw card. Yeah, you're going to meet that requirement. You got a dinosaur deck. Creatures you control trample. That is massive. Again, doubling the power of your creatures is great, but if they don't have trample or a way to get through, um, the simplest, tiniest little token can just block them and jump block and be like, okay, cool, thanks. Uh, yeah, my little human soldier is gone. That's it. But if you have trample, it's like, oh, no, you've got a 40-pound dinosaur. 40 pound, 40 power, maybe a 40 pound, let's say a very light dinosaur, I think, a 40 power dinosaur, uh, yeah, you can't just jump block that, and you're probably gone, on top of that, whenever a creature power for a greater and it's your control, draw a card, that's gonna happen quite a bit, moving on, speaking of drawing, return the wild speaker, this is great for multiple reasons, and I really wish they'd reprint it more, Choose one, draw cards equally, greatest power by non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control, plus three by three until left turn, again, your dinosaurs. I mean, most of the deck cards in this deck are not going to be human. Your dinosaurs can get absolutely massive and, uh, yeah, draw 40 cards, whatever it is, for five mana, instant speed. What's not to love about that? Or again, yeah, sure, your dinosaurs need a little extra pump. Sure, plus three, plus three to your dinosaurs until end of turn, which, of course, if you do that before any other dinosaurs come into play, yeah, you just basically are making even more value out of that. Again, if you put another dinosaur into play after playing this, that's basically plus six, plus six, another one for that. It's basically plus 12, plus 12, taking a giant amount of advantage off of that. So yeah, overall, yeah, I, I do like the design of this one. I do think it needs some slight tweaking again because I think one version might be too powerful, one version might not be powerful enough. It is a nine mana commander, so that is quite a bit. That being said, yeah, I think there's a, a little bit of tweaking somewhere between that could work, maybe like, Whenever it enters the battlefield, you know, you get that trigger. That would obviously change things the way you go. I mean, you still want to go wide with dinosaurs, but you would also want to be blinking this more often. Things like that. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this design. Do you think that we will be seeing a legendary elder dinosaur? Like, five mana. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be elder. It probably would be, though. But yeah, a five-color dinosaur commander in the new Ixalan coming out. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Are, you know, obviously... When I see posts like this, you know, my brain just starts going when it comes to this kind of thing. So I just like, I have to get this out. I just have to share it. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And we'll see if I'm anywhere near close. Do you think I'm going to be close at all to what a five color legendary dinosaur could be? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And with that, this episode is coming to a close. So let me know your thoughts are on in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. 